Based in Leicester for a hundred years, Harrison Castings Limited is a long-standing success story of great British engineering at its best. This film celebrates the history of the company, giving an insight into foundry life over three generations of family ownership. Its founder, Robert Charles Harrison, was born in 1874 in Leicester. At the age of 17, he was apprenticed to S. Russell and Sons, iron founders of Leicester. In 1911, after 20 years' experience in the industry, he set up his own small foundry in the stables behind his home, the White House, in the village of Keam in Leicestershire. In 1919, Robert Harrison purchased some derelict property in Causeway Lane, Leicester, and established another foundry. By 1930, these two foundries were being run by Robert Harrison and Rolls Harrison, both sons of the founder. The company's earliest customers included Jimson of Leicester, J.M. Smith, Coppersmiths, Dryad and Worthington Simpson. In 1939, the company was incorporated to become R.C. Harrison and Sons Limited and moved to a new purpose-built foundry in Gough Road, Leicester. In 1941, Harrison Castings worked closely with Frank Whittle's company, Powerjets Limited, to develop castings for the compressor casings of the Gloucester Whittle E28 Stroke 39, the first turbojet-powered aircraft to fly successfully. A model of this first jet engine was made at the Gough Road Foundry and is now on display in the London Science Museum. During the 1940s and 1950s, Post-war expansion enabled further growth for the company and the Gough Road foundry produced a wide variety of aluminium castings for customers including Watkin, Jones & Shipman, Adcock & Shipley, Stibby and British United Shoe Machinery. In 1949, Robert Charles Harrison died and his sons Rolls and Robert became joint managing directors. One of the largest aluminium castings ever to be made was cast at the Gough Road Foundry in 1953 for Dunlop of Leicester. It was an aluminium wheel 15 feet in diameter and weighing 4 tons. In 1958, Harrison Castings was commissioned to produce a 10 foot high bronze cross and two 7 foot high candlesticks for St Paul's Cathedral in London, where they remain to this day. The 1950s and 1960s saw further growth and prosperity and a training school was established in 1965 for foundry apprentices. The 1970s brought great advances in technology, notably the installation of electric melting in 1972. In 1979, Robert and David Harrison, sons of Rolls Harrison, were appointed as joint managing directors. The 1980s were a time of significant change. Rolls-Royce became a major new customer, requiring castings for their diesel engines and transmissions for the Warrior fighting vehicle. In 1988, the company became jointly owned by Robert and Peter Harrison, grandsons of the founder. During the early 1990s and into the new millennium, the foundry moved away from traditional green sand molding and introduced resin bonded sands. During this time, the whole foundry was re-equipped and modernized. In 1994, the company changed its name to Harrison Castings Limited. With the demise of the machine tool and knitting machine industry in Leicester, the company established new markets in the large diesel engine, power generation and medical sectors. Today, we have a worldwide client base across a broad range of industries. Harrison Castings is the largest and most technically advanced aluminium sand foundry in the UK, with 100,000 square feet of productive space, working 24 hours a day and employing 120 personnel. We produce over 1,500 tons of aluminium sand castings every year. We have four molding lines utilizing the latest molding techniques and equipment. The foundry is able to produce castings of up to half a ton on a high volume production line basis. The combination of highly skilled staff and state-of-the-art technology at every stage of the manufacturing process enables us to produce castings of the highest quality in very large volumes. And as we celebrate our centenary, 
we look forward to the future with confidence that we can meet the challenges of the next 100 years.